Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutritional advice. Um, I'd like to talk today uh, about the tryptophan paradox. Um, there are a lot of interesting paradoxes in nutrition uh, and the tryptophan paradox uh, is one of my favorites. Um, so what's the background on the tryptophan paradox and why uh, is it important nutritionally? Um, well, this relates to the function of tryptophan as a precursor to serotonin in the brain. Now, serotonin is an important neurotransmitter, uh, and increasingly it's being shown that people with low serotonin levels uh, are actually more likely uh, to suffer from depression. Um, many of the pharmaceutical drugs that are uh, developed currently uh, aim to boost serotonin levels. Uh, so serotonin uh, being at optimal levels within the brain is important for mental health um, and one of the ways that you can actually boost serotonin levels in the brain is with the amino acid tryptophan. Uh, now tryptophan uh, is uh, an essential amino acid, uh, it, uh, it is in the plasma, it travels around in the blood uh, and it crosses into the brain through the large neutral uh, amino acid transporter. Uh, once in the brain uh, it's synthesized to 5-hydroxytryptophan and then uh, into serotonin and the serotonin can actually be subsequently metabolized into melatonin uh, which is a hormone that induces sleep in humans. Um, evidence shows that if you take uh, the amino acid uh, tryptophan and you, you take a supplement uh, your blood levels increase, your brain levels increase uh, and your uh, serotonin levels increase. Now the tryptophan paradox relates to the fact that foods high in tryptophan uh, are, are quite frequently uh, not actually very good at raising uh, brain levels of tryptophan. Um, and the reason for this relates to the way that the tryptophan gets into uh, the brain. There is a, a transporter on the blood-brain barrier that allows large neutral amino acids um, to pass into the brain, uh, tryptophan being one of those amino acids. But there are other amino acids that also use this transporter. And if we look at some of the foods that contain tryptophan, uh, pumpkin seeds and bananas, for example, are quite frequently uh, quoted as being foods that are high in tryptophan. And people assume, therefore, that these foods may be beneficial at raising uh, brain levels of serotonin. Um, now, the paradox relates to the fact that these foods also contain quite high amounts of another amino acid that uses the large neutral amino acid transporter called L-tyrosine. Um, L-tyrosine is a non-essential amino acid, but it competes with tryptophan to get into the brain on this transporter. Now, if we look at pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds uh, have twice as much tyrosine uh, as they do tryptophan. And if we look at bananas, they have about equal amounts of tryptophan and tyrosine. So when you consume these foods, what actually happens is uh, both of these amino acids try to get into the brain. They compete with each other uh, on the, the, the large uh, neutral amino acid transporter uh, and, and brain level of, of tryptophan don't increase as much as you would have expect, uh, expected based on the amount of tryptophan in the foods. Um, this, is, this is similar for most foods because most foods that contain tryptophan also contain tyrosine and many of the foods that are high in tryptophan are actually higher in the amino acid tyrosine. So looking at the, tyros looking at the tryptophan content of a food is not really an a good indicator of whether it will, will uh, raise levels of serotonin or not. Um, now that, there is a, a, a better way of raising brain levels of serotonin and it doesn't involve eating foods that are high in tryptophan. Uh, paradoxically, it involves eating carbohydrates that have no tryptophan uh, in them at all. Now, the reason for this is that we have tryptophan um, in our blood. Uh, it's, it's circulating in our blood uh, bound to albumin. Um, and we have a store of it in our, in our blood, in, blood, in our plasma. When we eat carbohydrate foods, uh, we cause a release of insulin. Uh, and that insulin uh, is very good at driving branch chain amino acids and other amino acids into skeletal muscle. Um, and many of the amino acids that it removes from the plasma by driving them into the skeletal muscle are large neutral amino acids. Uh, and that means that they are removed from the plasma and they are removed from competition with tryptophan 
or the large neutral amino acid transporter. And the result of this is that when you eat a carbohydrate food, your plasma levels of the other large neutral amino acids decreases uh, in relation to your amount of tryptophan. Uh, the tryptophan concentration, uh, the relative tryptophan concentration of the blood increases, and that means more tryptophan actually gets into the brain and more of it gets converted to serotonin. So there is an interesting paradox. If you want to increase your brain levels of serotonin, turn to foods that uh, turn to foods that don't actually contain any of the precursor molecule carbohydrates. If you actually try and eat the foods that contain more of the tryptophan, what you find is that it doesn't really have uh, the effect that you expect. Um, any any food that contains protein really ten, tends to uh, tends to have a lot of tyrosine and a lot of tryptophan and therefore it, it won't be effective. So really what you need to do is turn to carbohydrate foods uh, if you want to boost your levels of serotonin. Now if you look at the other uh, the other amino acids in protein, tyrosine doesn't seem to have the same problem. High protein foods uh, do seem to actually raise um, uh, plasma levels of tyrosine and that tyrosine does actually seem to get into the brain. It doesn't seem to have the same problem with inhibition from, uh, from the tryptophan. So high protein foods do increase brain levels of tyrosine which of course are then converted uh, to noradrenaline, adrenaline and dopamine uh, which gives you a, a motivational uh, stimulatory effect in your brain. Um, but if we want to boost levels of serotonin, which has a more calming effect, uh, then we really need to turn to carbohydrate foods. I like this paradox. I think it's interesting. Many people uh, are aware of it. It's, it's been well published and well researched, but um, I, I find that interesting. And, and, and this, this, this use of amino acids to be able to boost brain levels of particular neurotransmitters is something that's uh, starting to gain traction uh, in the scientific literature. Um, there's been uh, experimental uh, work done, a lot of experimental work done on animals, and it's starting to be realized that uh, one of the best ways that you can that, that you can boost uh, brain levels of particular neurotransmitters is actually just by supplying um, the uh, precursor amino acids. Uh, but obviously, those amino acids just because they're in the plasma, just because we eat them and they get into the blood, doesn't mean that they're actually going to have the effect. And there are a few considerations that you have to have to make if you want to boost your brain levels of these particular amino acids to be able to to optimize your neurotransmitter levels in your brain. So if you if you're interested in boosting your uh, serotonin levels, uh, what you really need to do is is take a high carbohydrate food. Of course, the uh, the other way is to take a supplement of the 5-hydroxytryptophan, which I've mentioned in some of my other videos. 5-hydroxytryptophan is a, a supplement that you can take uh, and that passes into the into the brain uh, and it is a, a direct precursor of serotonin so there's, there's, there's two ways and if you take your 5-hydroxytryptophan uh, with a carbohydrate food you'll find it will probably be more effective than if you took it uh, on its own so there's a there's an interesting paradox. Um, I hope if you uh, if I find this interesting, you'll go and find my other video where I talk about the benefits of uh, L-tryptophan uh, in anxi uh, for anxiety and depression. Um, it does appear to have uh, uh, boosting serotonin levels naturally using uh, foods does seem to have a beneficial effect on depression, uh, and this is what we're increasingly finding. Uh, maybe depression in in some instances is related uh, to a poor quality diet, and we go back to a more traditional. Uh, eating pattern uh, we find that it, people tend to be healthier and people to that includes mental health as well as physical health so i hope this is interesting if you have any comments please put them in the boxes below uh, and please check out my other video on uh, the benefits of uh, l-tryptophan for depression